to talk about new ideas for making puppets and ventriloquist figures. And I'd like you to meet my friend, Dorothy Dooley. Hi. And we're going to talk about how you can make puppets and ventriloquist figures from other puppets and puppet heads and hands. First of all, I'm going to talk about these cloth foam-based puppets that I, that I have here. Dorothy is the mother of four children and the wife of a husband that you're going to meet today. And I've made them all from puppets. Now, Dorothy, this is what I look like. This is right. This is how Dorothy came in the mail. And if you will send me a double-stamped business size self-addressed envelope, I will send you addresses where you can buy these commercial, commercially made puppets. Now, I'll tell you right now, they're very expensive. But if you followed our series on how to make puppets and have seen how much work it is, you'll understand why they cost so much. Dorothy came like this, and uh, I'm going to put you down for a minute, all right? All right. She came that way, and I'm going to show you what I did. First of all, we have to have a body. And so I started out with a two-inch piece of foam. Now, you can buy foam at various places, craft stores. Uh, this is bedding foam that I got. Let me show you. Uh, that's, I think, a small, probably a crib size that uh, is two inches wide. And I cut it in pieces, 23 by 23. Now, sometimes it has to be longer than that if you've got a, a larger pup that you want to make. But this is what the 23 by 23 inch size. It's kind of cylinder. And I use a hot glue gun. In fact, why don't we look right now at our workshop to see just exactly how we make these foam base bodies. I start out with 23 by 23. And I hot glue gun the pieces together. It takes a long time. Like I said, you can watch television or something while you're doing it. You can use contact cement too, but a hot glue gun, it works a lot better. And you put, the, put them together edge to edge until it ends up this way. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I usually put that in the front for the stomach so that I'm going to make a hole in the back. Now there's uh, for you to put your hand in it. All about, I'd say, uh, a couple inches down from the top. Then if, if it's too long, uh, when you set the puppet down, if it's too long, you cut off so that it looks natural. You cut off whatever you need. That's why I like to make them that long. You, if you make a really big character, it may be longer. Now, I made uh, this out of really expensive foam, and expensive foam is, cheap foam is a lot better than expensive foam. There's the hole in the hand. This is the kind of foam that you get. This was like a, a crib mattress. This is a, that's the two inch foam we're making the bodies from. And here again, then I sculpt the top so it will uh, fit into the neck. Now, for a professional type puppet, if you wanted to make them to sell, then you really need to line the whole thing. And this is what it looks like lined with the arms on it. Just a hot glue gun. And you just start out and just start lining. Well, to start out with, I took a pair of scissors. I'm not going to do that today. But I took a pair of scissors and I just snipped right up the back of her foam base body, all the way up to the top. And then I safety pinned her, put her right over top of this cylinder of foam and safety pinned. Unless I um, cut her, it's going to be hard for me to show you, but I safety pinned her shoulders. This is just kind of trial and error. Safety pinned her shoulders right to the cylinder. Here it is. So that her body would fit right over. That uh, I've got arms on this one, but in her case, she already had long enough arms that we didn't need these, so um, ignore these arms that are sticking out. They don't have hands on because I put, I pin or sew the hands on later. But I pull her all the way down, over top, then safety pin, or you can sew her over this um, body. And then I added legs. Now, there's two different sizes of legs. For the adult puppets, there's this size. And in fact, let's go to the workroom right now and see how we made these legs. 
a hand and arm pattern is on the same sheet that I will send to you with the mouth, different parts of the mouth pattern. Now, if you want smaller arms, you can always, don't forget your copy machines that will reduce things in size. Uh, they are just invaluable. Well, you cut the pattern out and you each, uh, it's very simple. It's just two of those. You can make it longer or shorter. Two uh, of the patterns, you lay it out. I just did some short ones here on a, a double piece of cloth with the face inside and pin it together and then stitch it right around the lines. And then cut it out, say a quarter of an inch beyond the lines. And then reverse it, turn it inside out just like a glove. And then if you want, um, if you want to have the fingers to be poseable, then you can use a piece of some wire, some wire or some chenille, and you fold it over, and then what you do, in essence, is line with wire all the way around there. It takes some doing, but a lot of my hands, instead of going like this, the puppet will, you can pose their hands um, by putting the wire. You have to bend it ahead of time, bend up a wire, and put it around like that on the inside, and then after, then you stuff it with polyester fiber fill after that, and then they'll pose.